I am Sunday Gardner, your online travel boss. I'm talking all things launching, marketing, operating, and the mindset required to have a profitable travel business. So I don't want you to get confused by what I do versus what other people out there in the marketplace. I do not recruit travel agents. I assume that you are going to get your travel agent superpower either from a host agency or you're going to uh, get it independently. So I'm not a recruiter. I'm not here asking you to sign up and become a travel agent, right? You are going to either get your superpower from an existing host agency or you already have that host agency superpower from some host agency and what you are now is stuck right? You've got all of this information from them. You've got the ability to book travel all over the world in the middle of the pandemic and you don't know what to do, right? Even pandemic aside, you don't know what to do, right? You don't know how to market your business. Maybe you you think you've launched your business, but you've not made any sales. You don't know how to get any clients. This conversation today is for you. It's for those people who feel like that. So it's for all the ones. Now for all the zeros, Probably next week's topic is going to be for you. You may want to also uh, check my unit section to see if there's an applicable topic for where you may be in the space right now. So I want to be clear about that. I got you because today we're going to discuss my secrets to successfully launching a travel business. And we're going to talk about what launch means, right? Not just saying I have a business, right? Because many of you may think that you've launched your business, but you haven't done some of the things that we've talked about. So that's warranting a relaunch, right? So we're going to be very clear about what a launch is, why you may need to relaunch. And even if you've already done a launch, why you may need to come back to the drawing board and get some things right so that you can be prepared when things open up for travel and you really are ready to start acquiring clients in your business, all right? So we are gonna be really talking about what it means to launch and then how to move from launch phase or startup phase to growth phase, all right? You guys ready? I'm ready to go, let's go. So before we dive into what you need to do to launch, let's talk about how you know if you're in startup mode, right? Because many of you, I posted, I mean, I had an overwhelming response to the growth guide that I created and didn't end up giving out any. Do you know why? Because many of you, when I actually reached out to you and talked to you, were not in a growth mode. You're still in startup mode and you don't even know it. So let's talk about if you're in startup mode and what it means to be launching a travel business, all right? You guys ready? So this is what it means to do, so I'm reading my notes. How do you know you're in the startup phase or you need to relaunch your travel business? Number one, you haven't legally formed your business, right? You have no doing business as, you don't even know what a DBA is, right? You have no business name, no e EIN number. You have no insurance to protect yourself. You really are not a legal entity in the eyes of Uncle Sam or anybody else except for you, right? That is an indication that you need to launch, step back, and you need to regroup, right? So if you haven't formed legally an entity, and you're not a business, you need to stop and you need to step back and you need to you need to get that taken care of, right? So let's be clear. So number one is this is how you know you're in startup phase. You haven't legally formed. Number two, you haven't made a sale, right? You haven't sold anything. Um, and even if you did sell something, you wouldn't know you have no financial systems. You have no way to track the dollars that you're doing. You um, have no bank account. You have no invoicing system. You have no way to process credit cards. You just you you just are just there taking cash app maybe right. Maybe you just having people cash app you stuff right. That's an indication that you're in startup mode right. That you don't have a business yet right. That's another indication. Number three is, is that you have no way of consistently getting clients. Consistently. I want you to underline the word consistently. So if you don't consistently know how your clients are coming into your business, you're still in startup mode, right? If you're still trying to figure that out and maybe you're just going to your friends and family and that's how you are getting business or attempting to get business, but you don't have a system by which you can reliably count on you getting business, you're in startup mode. All right, number four. 
You have no way to process or manage your clients. So even if you were to get a bunch of clients today, you couldn't handle the volume. You wouldn't be able to know how to take their information, email them out consistently. You would be struggling if you got 10 people right now. If 10 people came to you and said, I want you fill in the blank to book my travel, you'd be like, oh shit, what am I supposed to do with these 10 people? That was me when I started in the travel business, right? My husband went off and told somebody, <laughs> some of his friends, Sunday's a travel agent and she can book your travel. And so one of his friends came to me and was like, I need you to book my soccer trip. And I was like, I, that, that was me. I was like, I, I, so I kept putting him off. Like, so he was like, you know, can, can you give me a quote? I couldn't quote. I couldn't, I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to do with the business. I went in the back office and I tried to figure it out. And I was like, I don't have time for this shit. I got a job. I like, I got, like, I got a job. Like I got a full-time job. I, I don't have time to try and book this. I'm busy. Right. Well, <laughs> you're in startup mode if that's you, right? And I, you know, I can laugh about it now, but to this day, like I missed probably a several thousand dollar commission because I was, I, I, could, I wasn't prepared to take on the business, right? My husband is a barber, so he is always talking about something and, you know, he's always meeting people. So I was like, yeah, I can book travel. And he told people and they started, and I was like, I'm, I, like, I'm not ready. Like, I'm, I, and I didn't know how to fulfill it. Right. So if that's you, unfortunately you're in startup mode. So although I appreciate you wanting to get a growth guide, what we really need to do is get you a startup guide and make sure that you've got your foundation items in place and that you're ready to take on bookings. Right. Okay. So now that you understand, hopefully that makes sense for everybody, right? Give me some hearts or love and let me know that that makes sense to you guys in terms of understanding the difference between being in startup mode and growth. So many of you may come to me and be like, well, you know what? I got my business startup. I'm, I'm, I'm legally formed. So I'm, in, I'm ready to grow, right? I've had a couple of sales. I'm ready to go. So, you know, I, you know, I don't really need to know about sales and marketing, but that doesn't matter. Because I've already launched, I told my friends and family, I'm in business and I'm ready to go, right? But let's say, if you got volume and you can't handle it, you need not to, you, you need not to really think that you're in growth mode. You're still in startup. And it's okay to be in startup. I don't want you to think that there's anything wrong with being in startup because there's nothing wrong with being in startup mode. Just know that there's some things that you want to do before you start scaling and start trying to grow at exponential or a fast pace, right? You want to make sure that your foundation, and when I say foundation, when you build a house, right, you want to be able to weather the storm good and bad, and you want to be prepared, right? So that's what we want to talk about today, all right? So now that we know which phase you're in, growth is all those things are done, and really what you're trying to do is rinse and repeat. Growth is about rinsing and repeating. You've had sales, you understand your sales process, you understand how to fulfill your clients, you know how to service them, you've got systems in place, and what you're trying to do is get more of it, right? You have everything in place and you want more. That's when you're in growth mode, okay? Many of you are, are in startup mode. Okay, so now that we're clear on that, let's talk about the secrets of success to successfully launching, relaunching, or starting and being in the startup phase and the things that you need to be focused on. You, got, you ready? All right. Number one thing that is the secret is, is that you need to do, you need to understand what do you provide? I'm just going to, I'm going to say that again. Your number one thing that you need to do when you start this business, frankly, any business, but when you start your travel business, understand what you provide. And many of you right now are going to be, are, are like to yourself, well, duh, Sunday, I provide travel. Don't you know what we do? Yes, you provide travel. But what I mean specifically about that is what is your specialty? Many, you know, I, I was talking to a client, a, a prospective client the other day, and she was like, nope, I don't have a specialty. And, you know, immediately when somebody tells me that they don't have a specialty, I look to myself and I say, okay, is it that they don't have a specialty because they don't know that they need to have a specialty or are they resistant to having a specialty? I don't work with people who are resistant to having a specialty, right? Because if you want to be a jack of all trades, I'm going to release 
you to go do that, right? Because what you're going to find is continued frustration. You're going to continue wasting your money and your time trying to service everyone. The world is big. I'm going to tell you my main platform for getting clients, for advertising, marketing, my whole sales process right now is Facebook. Facebook alone every month has over 2 billion people on the platform, right? So when you tell me that you sell travel and you don't know who you sell it to, you don't know what your specialty is, how are you going to attract 2 billion people? What is the thing that's going to have you set yourself apart from all of that volume? Although it seems attractive, immediately 2 billion people is overwhelming to me, right? Just look in your back office right now and you look at how many different suppliers you have available to work with you. If you're with any host agency, that's probably in the number of hundreds. And although that may seem sexy, it's overwhelming you probably, right? Is, is that where do you begin? Who should you pick? Which supplier should you go with, right? What what is it that you talk to people about? Just travel in general, right? And then when you ask me, you know, how should you market and you don't have a specialty, I say, well, I don't know what you should market, right? I don't know what you specialize in. So I know what my constraints are. I don't work with people who don't want to have a specialty or are not open to a specialty. So the number one secret is if you want to immediately get focused, specialize in a particular audience, specialize in a particular area of travel, right? And again, I want to be clear about what an area of travel is. It's not group travel. That's just a type of travel. That's not an area of travel. Examples of a niche are weddings. That's an air, that's a niche area, right? Wellness travel, sports travel, that's a niche area, right? Because there's a specific type of person who's interested in that type of travel, right? I've got a client and her specialty is faith-based travel, right? That's a specialty, right? Group travel is just the number of people who are going to go on your types of trips. That's not a specialty. So that's the number one secret is Understand what you provide in it in relationship to the travel industry, right? And what is your specialty? What are your products and services? What is it that you're offering to your prospective clients? Okay, that's number one. Number two is who do you serve, right? So now that you know what you do, who is it the person to benefit from it, right? So who's your audience, right? Who is your who is the person that you are servicing? Again, it's not everybody. If you come to me and you tell me that I, I work with everybody, I think I, I, I had a client, again, a prospective client, and she told me that she worked uh, with people between the ages of 22 and 52, right? I'm 47. What I wanted to do when I traveled at 22 is nothing compared to what I wanted. It's completely opposite of what it what is that I want to do at 47, right? Those are different markets, right? They have different needs. The 22-year-old, that 22-year-old me at 22 was just out of college. No kids, no family, right? I went to Cancun when I was 22, I think. I think I was 22 or 21. I think I just turned 20. Went to Cancun, did not sleep for four days. My girlfriend and I partied so hard, I came home and slept for 16 hours. I think I slept in two-hour increments. I may have slept five hours total the entire time. Now, when I travel, I sleep the majority of the time. <laughs> you know, I don't drink. Like, I drink when I go. I mean, I drink pretty much everywhere I go, but I don't drink to party like that. I'm not at parties when I go out. I'm looking for good food. I'm looking for spas. I'm looking for quiet time. And I'm looking for activities for my kids, right? Different needs at those ages, right? So I understand that those are different markets, right? So you need to understand who your market is. And when you start to blend and you start to go after broad markets, then your messaging becomes very confusing. What is it that you are talking about, right? Maybe then you've got to start marketing to this, this age group versus this age group versus this age group, right? Those are multiple campaigns, multiple focuses. It's division of your focus, right? But when you know that you're working with 34 or 35 to 44 or maybe even 34, 35 to 55, right? That's a much 
much more narrow market than 22 to 52. Does that make sense, right? So understand who it is that you serve and what their needs are. What is it that that particular market that you serve, what is their needs? Once you understand that, it becomes so much easier to service them, to provide value to them because you know you know them, right? So many of you all have just skipped market research. You know nothing about your prospective clients. You know that they want they want easier service maybe, but you don't really know anything else about what their needs are because you really haven't dissected exactly who it is that you work with, right? I know to the age group of the people that I work with. I know what they're struggling with. I know what keeps them up at night. I know what they want is their future dreams and desires, right? That's the same thing that you need to understand. And that knowledge only comes by virtue of you doing research, right? So many of you have launched your business, know nothing about your audience, know nothing about a specialty, and then you wonder why you can't get clients. The reason you can is because you're trying to service everyone and you need to stop that. Specialize. Specialize and do some research about the people that you want to work with, right? All right, hopefully that makes sense. Number three, come on, we this is going to be an obvious one for you guys, but you need to legally form your business, all right? Stop going out there, doing this as a side hustle, and you don't have it uh, together legally, right? And then you expose yourself, right? You expose yourself, your family, everything that you've got going on when you're not legally formed and you don't have protection, right? So that's what insurance is about, is protecting your legal arses so that in the event that something happens, you don't lose your home, right? You don't lose your livelihood, right? You protect your assets, right? I always say your backside, right? So legally form and making sure that you have a uh, risk. You've mitigated your risk by having protection. You've also mitigated your risk by having terms and conditions, right? That it's, it, it's clear to your audience and your clients what they should expect, what you deliver and what you're on the hook. Because what I will tell you is lack of knowledge does not mean lack of liability, right? Because you don't know better doesn't mean that you can't get sued and can't be held liable for somebody's trip that you booked and you don't have the right insurance, right? So lack of knowledge does not mean lack of liability, right? You sign up, you start selling travel and you're not protected does not mean that you can't be held liable in the event that somebody breaks their leg on the trip, right? Which can happen. I mean, you can't prevent that. You don't know what's going to happen. They could slip, they could fall, they could break a leg, and they want to sue you, right? How many people are getting sued because of COVID cancellations? And, you know, maybe they, maybe the, the, the travel agent didn't offer travel insurance, right? Not the fact that travel insurance didn't even cover half of the COVID cases, but the point is, is that because you don't know doesn't mean that you're not liable. So you do need to ensure that you're covered. All right. So number four, type number four, if you guys are ready for the number four secret as to what uh, will make sure that you have a successful launch, right? Let's number four is sales and marketing foundation. You signed up, you joined up, you joined with your host agency, your host agency said all you need are your friends and family because travel sells itself and you're going to be good, right? Pay our fee and that's all you need. You don't need you know, anything about sales and marketing. You just post on your timeline, a couple of different posts, and you're going to be good. That's it. And I'm not trying to call anybody a liar, but you need a sales and marketing foundation. If you want to get out of startup mode and you want to consistently make sales that you can rely on, to a science, you need to have a sales and marketing uh, foundation. And so let's talk about what that looks like. So sales, um, marketing, sales and marketing, and they are two different things, right? Marketing is about your ability to attract and uh, attract people into your products and services, right? Selling is your ability to convert those people that you track into paying clients, right? That's the difference, right? So one is about how do you get people to come to your products and service? How do you position yourself in the marketplace? And one is how do you take that and move them down a process that ultimately gets a sale, right? So hopefully that makes sense. So 
The first thing is, is marketing. What is What does it mean to have a marketing foundation, right? And my marketing foundation and the principle that I teach is called ARC. And this sort of wraps up sales and marketing together. And ARC is simply this. ARC stands for A for attraction. What is your attraction method? What is it that you're attracting people to? What is the offer that you're attracting them to, right? How do you get strangers, how do you get in front of strangers Give them an offer that will compel them to want to get to know you better. Simply put, what is it that you do to get in front of strangers, either organically or through paid means, to get people to be compelled to get to know you, right? Oftentimes what happens is you get in front of a stranger and you're trying to sell them. You're not trying to build a relationship or even just start a conversation. You're trying to sell them something. That's the best way to, to repel strangers. What you want to do is figure out a process, right? And, and there's methods to do that, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But the reality is, is attraction is about you getting in front of stranger or warm audience or somebody that is an acquaintance and compelling them to want to get to know you better, right? That's what attraction is, right? So the R in the arc is relationships. So now that they've gotten, they, they, they've done the exchange, they've given some information to you, right? Either a phone number, an email address, you know, a, a, a high five or whatever, whatever you collect in order to get to know that relationship. My process is I collect email address and I collect uh, phone numbers and I get you in my group. That's how, I, how you get to know me. Right, same thing for you. What's your get to know you strategy? What's your attraction strategy? I use paid ads, right? So I pay for ads, I run those ads to my target audience and I compel my target audience to click on a button to come and join me in my group so we can get to know each other. That's what I do, right? What is your process to attract strangers to your business, right? So then once you've got them, how do you build a relationship, right? Well, I build a relationship through these lives, right? You get to know me through these lives. I give you valuable information every week. I come here every single Wednesday, right? You know, I try not to miss most Wednesday, but most Wednesdays I'm here. You know, it used to be seven, now it's five. And I show up and I provide training to you all about how to market how to market, how to launch, how to operate, how to have the mindset of a travel business. What do you do for your strangers? What? How do you build a relationship so they can get to know you as the expert in your area of travel, right? So if you specialize in wellness travel, right? How do you find people who need wellness travel in their life, right? And there's a lot of people right now that need wellness travel in their life. How do you get in front of them, right? What are you doing to get in front of them? If you don't have that process identified, you don't know how to do that, you're looking at me like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I don't know what to do to do that, right? You're still in startup mode. You need to get that defined. So the R is the relationship. Now, there's many ways to do the relationship. You can do the relationship through video, like I do. You can do it through email marketing, right? You can do it through social media, right? Through written content and posts, video, right? You can uh, you can do it in events. Many of you before COVID did events and you got to know people in events. That really was your attraction system, right? But it's really after you get that content or you get that information, how do you keep the relation going, right? How do you take that coffee date in to date number two, three, four, right? What opportunities do you get to show up in your lead's life to demonstrate your expertise in your niche, right? And let them know that you're the person that's got it together and is the go-to person for your area, right? That's what you want to do in the relationship. Hopefully that makes sense. So R is relationship. And then the C is, and I and this is like my favorite saying though, it's great if you're good at attraction, great at building relationships, but if you're not offering anything for sale, then what you've got is a process by which to get new friends, right? And we're not in business to get friends. I mean, maybe you are, but I'm not. I'm in business, I'm in business for profit, right? So you need the C part of this, which is conversion, right? So what's your process to offer promotions, offer your products for sale, right? What do you do to do that? So how do you take them from just being, you know, you never want to be in the friend zone in business, right? So you want to ensure that you're not just creating a social group or a social situation, but that you're really positioning yourself as the expert in your field, right? And then you offer products, 
right? You offer things for sale. Don't lead with sales, but you certainly end with sales, right? Does that make sense? So ARC is the sales and marketing foundation, right? You have a way to attract, you have a way to relate, and you have a way to convert people into buying clients, right? And in the in, in the travel business, many of you don't think of yourself as salespeople. You don't think of yourself as marketer. Many of you, when you come into this group and I ask you what your number one struggle is, you tell me, I don't know how to market. I don't know how to get clients. I don't know how to, you know, consistently get traffic. I don't know anything about social media. I don't know anything of that. And so let me just set the record straight about social media. I feel compelled to say this, that social media is used for evil. <laughs> Like people use social media for evil and that's the reason why people don't want to be bothered with you because you're using it for evil. And let me give you some evil examples. Let me give you some examples of using social media for evil. Do not friend people and then immediately get in their inbox with some lame message uh, and then ultimately trying to sell to sell your recruiting services to try and get them to be a travel agent or that you're a travel agent and you want to sell them something. It doesn't matter what you do. If you don't know the person, don't slide in their inbox, right? Give them, you. I mean, there needs to be some relationship or way that gives you permission to come inside of somebody's inbox, right? That's evil, right? Social media was created to build relationships, period. That's you're successful on a social media platform when you focus on building relationships. That's what they're for. That's all that. And, and that's the beauty of social media is, is that it really is a, a relationship building platform. But the reality is, is that people start off that relationship with the hard sell. They come on the platform, they're like, I'm a travel agent now and I got, you know, $3,000 package. Let's go to Aruba. Let's go to Vegas. Let's go to Cancun, Mexico, wherever you want to go. Boom. And all you're doing is throwing up packages on your personal page, business page, and don't, under and then, and if you're savvy enough, you boost it. And then you're like, I, I got a few sales or I didn't get any sales at all. Nobody did because nobody knows who you are. And how are you any different than the other thousand other travel professionals who are doing that as a strategy, right? An appropriate strategy would be to create a sales and marketing process, potentially create yourself a sales funnel where you have some sort of stranger offer that compels them. So let's say you're in the wellness space, right? And um, I was just talking to one of our students today and she's in the, she specializes in essential workers. And so she wants to provide travel services to essential workers. What are essential workers going through right now? Right now they are struggling to keep people alive right? They are struggling to keep their sanity and, you know, they're not taking care of themselves. Self-care is the last thing on their mind because they're hundred percent focused on caring for others, right? So if you were specializing in wellness travel, it would be, it would behoove you potentially to create a stranger offer around how to do, how to care for yourself as an essential worker in a pandemic world, like five things you can do right now to help relieve your stress or relieve your uh, whatever, your stress. I mean, that's the only word I can think of right now while you're caring for others, right? Because it meets that person where they are. What are you doing as it relates to your specialty and meeting your clients where they are, right? That's what sales and marketing does is it positions you to be the expert in your area gets you in front of your ideal client consistently through organic or paid mechanisms, compels them to want to build a relationship, you provide opportunity to build that relationship, and then you create offers to sell. All right, so that's the number four, is you have a sales and marketing foundation. And my sales and marketing uh, foundation is through ARC. Now, one of the other things that I wanted to mention when it comes to sales and marketing is I've said this a couple of times, but I want to underline this is, is positioning, right? That marketing is about positioning. You want to position yourself in front of your people, right? They're not going to find you, right? I remember uh, when I first opened my first business in 2006, I was like, I'm going to build it in by golly, they'll be here and they'll show up. And the reality is people don't show up. You got to, you got to get in front of them. 
you got to get in front of them. And I'm not saying you got to do a song and dance, but you definitely got to position yourself to be in front of where your clients are. They may find you if you've got, you know, a great location where they may be passing, right? But you're an online business, right? So you are competing with a black hole, literally. Literally, there is a black hole that is the universe and you are competing. And what you want to do is pop out of that black hole and be like, here I am right? And that's what marketing does for you. It makes you come out of the black hole that is the internet and says, here I am, right? I am the person that can help you with the problem that you have. Pick me, right? That's what marketing does for you. And as a travel professional, particularly in home-based online travel business, you want to stand out. You got to position yourself and you got to get in front of them, right? And and, and you got to do it non-evilly. <laughs> that makes sense. Like, don't do it for evil. Like, don't go randomly friending people. And that is people's strategy. And that is being taught. And I think it's a horrible strategy, right? Because it pisses people off. It pisses me off, right? Don't slide in my inbox. You don't have any affiliation with me, but, but by sheer mention of the fact that you friended me on Facebook. You don't know anything about me. You don't even know what I do. You haven't even taken the time to even look at my profile to see what I do. You don't know anything about me, right? Take the time to build relationships. It'll be so much easier for you to sell. People buy from people they like. They buy from people that they know. They buy from people that they can connect with, right? So you create that connection. All right, so I'm, you know, I'm frowning because like I'm serious about this, right? Okay, so that's number four. One last thing I want to say about marketing, I wrote it down that I didn't, is brand and a vision. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this and I'm going to go to the last one, which is brand and vision, right? So you've got this travel business, you are about to launch and maybe you've decided to name it, you know, Sunday, your own name and that's it, right? So it's going to be Sunday's travel business, right? You know, Sunday is a great name. You know, I thank my mom for it. I can say that now at 47 that I think it's a great name, but it doesn't tell anybody anything about who it is that I do. You know, hopefully I'm I'm smart enough to put the word travel in it. So it lets people know at least that it's travel. But by virtue of having my name alone doesn't really indicate what my vision for my business is. It doesn't really tell the audience who it is that they're going to be working with, except for some, some person Sunday. And then they're probably confused. Is it a day of the week? What, what is it? Is it an ice cream? Is she going to be selling ice cream uh, when you travel? Like what does Sunday mean? Is it ice cream Sunday? Is it a day of the week Sunday? What is it? What, what does Sunday? Is it church related to, uh, travel? Like, you know, so it's confusing. It doesn't clearly identify what the vision of my business is. Unfortunately, many of you have a business and you don't even know what your vision is. So if you don't know what your vision is, how is your client supposed to know what your vision is? What is it that you want to accomplish with this business that you're set up, up right? What do you want the end result of people to have experience when they go, go through your company, when they go on a trip that you curate for them? What is it that you want? What's that vision? What is it that you want out of your business? What do you want to accomplish with your business, right? You know, my vision for my business is super clear, right? I help people passionate about travel, launch, operate, and um, what is it? Launch and operate and grow successful, profitable travel businesses, right? Through mark, Through business coaching and training. That's how I do it. Right? That's my vision, right? And it's specific. Like I help people who want to do travel businesses, not people who want to recruit, not people who want to do team building. I help people who want travel business, booking businesses, right? So it's super clear, right? So even though my name may not be clear, but my vision's clear. So when I talk about my business, when I talk about my services, when I talk about what it is that I do, the vision of what I do resonates everywhere. Does that make sense? Like that is so important when it comes to building a business is making sure that the vision of what it is that you want is super clear, not only to yourself, but everybody that comes in contact with you, right? So that's the secret. Operate from a vision. Operate from something that people want to be a part of right? Operate from something that gives people goosebumps about what it is that you do. Like I have goosebumps when I think about my, my uh, client's business where she wants to help essential workers, right? Uh, take care of themselves, right? Every single time we talk about it, I get away and I'm like, wow, right? I mean, you're going to help these people, right? These people need you, 
right? Yeah, we sell travel, but they need us. And it's not just because we want to make money. That's not enough vision, right? We want to help people realize their fill in the blank. What is that fill in the blank that you want to help people realize? If you don't know that vision and you haven't taken the time to write the vision down, you haven't taken the time to articulate even to yourself with the vision, then your clients for sure don't know it, right? So the secret number five around that whole marketing and branding is making sure that you have a clear vision about what it is that your business will do and who you service and how you're going to fulfill that vision to them. What's your promise to the people that you work with, right? Do they know it? Do you know it? Does everybody know it? Like, you know, you can't come within five minutes of meeting me and not know what my vision is, right? Like it, it, it resonates and like, it, like I, like, I don't know that I sweat my vision, but I'm damn near trying to sweat my vision, right? I want it to permeate in everything that I do say and touch, right? Same thing for you. I want your vision for your travel business to permeate in everything that you say, do, and touch. Everybody should be super clear about what that is, okay? All right, last one, last secret. Last but certainly not least is client fulfillment process. That's a big mouthful, but... Here it is. What does client fulfillment mean? Are your clients now? Now, now, I want to, I want to like break this down a little bit because most people will be like, yeah, my clients are happy with me, right? They're happy with me. Um, they're happy with my services. Or worse, you don't know if your clients are happy with you. But here's what client fulfillment is in a nutshell: How do you manage, track, and deliver your services to your clients? So you make a promise in your vision, and your client fulfillment process defines how you're going to deliver that. Right. So once they become a client, how you deliver and uh, provide that promise to them, how you deliver them the promise that you said that you would do. OK. Number two part of client fulfillment is, is how to make them happy and repeat clients. You ultimately want every person or damn near every person because you can't you can't make everybody happy. There's going to be you're going to do something that's going to piss somebody off. Right. And so hopefully you have a recovery process as a part of your fulfillment process that has a feedback loop. So when you do piss them off, you have an ability to recover, right? Because there's not 100% happiness anywhere, right? Something you're going to do is going to piss somebody off. They're not going to be happy. And your job as a business owner is to figure out how do you get that feedback so that you can do continuous improvement. Right. So many of you don't even know how to collect that feedback. Right. Positive or negative. Right. And so you don't have proof that you're doing a great job because you're not collecting positive feedback and you don't know how to improve on things that you're getting negative feedback because you don't have a way to get feedback. Right. So somebody bitches on your site. Right. Leaves bad, bad press on your site. What's your process to get in front of that? Right. Besides just tearing the post down. Do you understand what the bitch and complaint is about? Right. Is is it something in your process that you need to change, right? Are you open-minded? Is your mindset open enough not to take it personal and figure out, is there a process change that you need to make in your business, right? That's what client fulfillment is about. It's about making sure that you know how to make your clients happy. And in the event that they're not happy, what do you do about it to fix whatever's broken in your system to ensure that it doesn't happen again? Because it's one thing for you to be unhappy with me, but I guarantee you, if you're unhappy with something that I do, right? As long as it's not something that, like if I do something um, that is along my vision, I'm not going to change it. Right. Cause that's just, that's my vision. I, 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 what I will change is think about how I, I, uh, onboarded you. Maybe I shouldn't have onboarded you. So there's a change in our evaluation process. Right. So, but if it's something that it was rightfully wrong and, and I, I make mistakes all the time, every day, all this, all of the time. Right. Right. And so what I'm looking for, for every mistake that I do is that there's a process that we do and have internally to correct it. So it doesn't happen again. Right. What, and I'll, you know, air my dirty laundry, right. We had clients onboarding in our program last year, right. And our communication system was broken. Clients weren't getting communicate. They weren't getting emails to let them know when our clinics were or our classes were. So clients were missing classes and they were in my inbox complaining about the fact that, you know, they just had paid, put their money down and they wanted to come to the class and they couldn't because they, you, they, they missed the communication, right? That's a broken process. We had to fix that. I had to take that lump and I had to fix it, right? That's part of our client. So I rallied our entire team down. We fixed our email series. We re I realized that things were really broken. We fixed it and it doesn't happen anymore. 
right? So that's what client fulfillment is. And if you don't have a process that's looking, because we spend a lot of time trying to acquire a client, but we don't spend near enough time trying to keep them and make sure that we address their issues in the event that something happens um, during the process of us, of us fulfilling our service and or products to them. So client fulfillment needs to be on your list when it comes to that. All right. Hopefully you guys got these five to six items. I'll run through them really quick just so that you catch them just in case you may have missed it. Number one was what do you provide, right? What is it that you do? What is your specific area of the travel business that you will work with? Who is your client? Who do you serve? That's number two. Number three is legal formation, right? And business coverage that you've got that covered. Number four is a sales process, which is ARC. Number five is marketing, which is branding and positioning. Number six is client fulfillment, right? Those are the secrets to a successful launch. Have those defined, then you you get those, get that churning, right? And then you can move on rinsing and repeating, right? That's what I have for you today. Hey, I had a great time with you guys all. It's been a pleasure and I'll talk to you soon. If you like this episode, then share it. Sharing is caring and don't keep it to yourself. Spread the word. Another way to support this channel is to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel or leave us a message. Join us inside of our free Facebook group, The Travel Boss Group. Better yet, if you think you need help, schedule your free travel business launch diagnostic call. Links are mentioned below. This has been Sunday Gardner, your online travel boss. See you again on the next episode of Online Travel Boss TV.